All right, so those who are expecting Nancy, I am your Nancy now. So <laughs> uh, uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Om Lele, and Stuart did talk about uh, uh, my official title. So uh, I'm the assistant director of software engineering within the department of biomedical informatics. Uh, we have a group called informatics research and development that consists of other service lines as well. Jeremy Harper kind of leads up the research information services. I lead up the software engineering group. Uh, and before uh, we delve uh, into the presentation, uh, uh, I would like to kind of just give you an agenda of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to focus on uh, mostly uh, the mobile applications that the team, my team has been kind of working with. Um, there are obviously non-mobile applications in there as well, uh, which I'll touch upon briefly, but it's more or less today's presentation is a show and tell to kind of show you guys what we do. Uh, what space we operate in, uh, what are the different kinds of applications that we've built, uh, and hopefully spark ideas uh, 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 so that we can collaborate at, at a future point in time. Uh, uh, so, so with that said, I'll introduce the team. Um, I'll talk about those applications. Uh, and then one slide, maybe two, uh, on the project management approach, which is slightly different than the traditional approach. Uh, uh, within the medical center IT, so I'll kind of just point out the uh, key differences, um, and uh, we'll end with uh, uh, some time for, hopefully some time for uh, question and answers. Uh, so with that said, uh, so the team, uh, uh, Informatics Research and Development Software Engineering, we do provide end-to-end state-of-the-art software solutions uh, for researcher needs. Uh, we are an agile team uh, that, uh, that does full cycle or full stack professional software development. Uh, and we consist of software developers, business analysts, project managers um, uh, who work very closely with our customers uh, to understand their research needs and, and uh, develop high quality software. Uh, so it's basically we start from scratch uh, uh, and finish up with a developed product either in the research space or in the production space. Uh, and make it available for our um, end users. Uh, overall, the project portfolio uh, consists of two types of projects. I kind of briefly mentioned it, uh, uh, but uh, imagine a very broad strokes, two parts. One is uh, we are part of the research cycle, so we are written up into the grants. Uh, so we will be working with the PI throughout the grant cycle, uh, initially obviously at the proposal phase and then ending with uh, the delivery phase. Uh, and then the second part is uh, we do work with a lot of uh, production applications, as I like to call it, which is uh, either uh, uh, partnering with different uh, departments on campus or even different institutions uh, to do uh, work for their needs. Uh, we have been kind of moving, though the focus has been research, uh, we have been kind of uh, dabbling a little bit around uh, quality, so working with uh, uh, folks uh, on the uh, NISQIP side of the house, uh, so and uh, maybe a little bit on uh, a clinical side. We recently worked with uh, 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 Foundation Medicine to kind of uh, gather data about genetic mutations, kind of uh, uh, and parsing it and making it available. So, so we kind of do that, but our primary focus is research. Uh, so building applications for research that can be used in a, a production environment. So, and I'm, I'm going to kind of show you guys the example so it's a little bit more clearer uh, as we uh, move forward. If you have any questions along the way, uh, feel free to kind of just um, raise your hand and just ask. Uh, uh, I'm more than uh, uh, happy to kind of pause and answer it. I think that would be more interactive and helpful um, uh, to understand as well. Um, so, so that's the space that we operate in. Uh, we, are, uh, we operate at the sweet spot, uh, the intersection between uh, research for us, that's business, uh, uh, technology uh, for us, that is OCMC IT, uh, pretty, pretty much OCMC IT because we're on the med center side of the house, and then uh, the, the healthcare uh, side. Uh, so we do work with physicians, uh, sometimes wearing their PhD hat, sometimes wearing their MD hat, and so on. Uh, so we, we operate at that uh, uh, intersection uh, of the three. Um, from a competency standpoint, um, this is a schematic uh, to show you guys how we kind of align and fit into the entire uh, IT space. So uh, uh, a computer scientist rarely likes being called an IT person. Uh, so just to kind of show you guys where we are, 
the, the software engineering team uh, uh, sits at the intersection of uh, BMI and IT from a technology perspective. So, so we do work very, very closely with IT, and they're great, uh, but we are not IT per se. So we are right at the intersection. We work with IT a lot uh, uh, for, for infrastructure, so setting up databases, setting up networks, setting up servers. Uh, uh, even we have an uh, integral part of our team, uh, the, the, the PMO, which is the project management office within uh, IT. Uh, but our competencies are beyond that as well. So we do provide uh, core computer, computer science competencies in uh, uh, semantics or reasoning, machine learning, NLP, natural language processing, uh, data mining, uh, uh, distributed or large-scale computing like Hadoop, uh, big data, uh, <clears throat> networks and uh, data visualizations, human-computer interaction, analytics, uh, and obviously the traditional uh, software engineering uh, competencies that you think about, uh, which is basically core Java, uh, uh, web apps, uh, uh, mobile applications, databases, and ETLs, and so on. So, so that's the amalgam of competencies. That sits within my team, and we kind of obviously work very closely with IT, but we are kind of at that uh, intersection. Uh, there's other service lines within BMI. The, the, this doesn't list uh, it in entirety, but gives you an idea. So we are one, uh, software engineering, uh, but there's others. So there's biostatistics, bioinformatics, uh, clinical informatics, uh, uh, IS for research, and research information services. REDCap is which, uh, a part of research information services, which you heard from Amy earlier. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do a, uh, as good of a job as Amy. Where's Amy? Did she leave? Okay. But I'll try. Okay. So with that, um, hopefully that gives you an idea as to what space we operate in. Um, uh, with that, I'll actually start uh, talking about the custom applications part of the presentation. Uh, so I'm going to start with Scarlett, but I'm going to spend the least amount of time on Scarlett. Uh, John Thompson, John, if you could wave your hand. So back there, he is scheduled to talk about Scarlett today. Uh, so he's going to actually uh, uh, give you more information than you need about Scarlett uh, for about an hour, uh, give or take. So, so I'm not going to kind of delve into details. But basically, it is a disease registry platform uh, that we worked uh, to uh, uh, make it very operationally efficient. Uh, uh, if you have an IRB protocol approved uh, and you have uh, already started consenting patients, uh, we are able to set up uh, a standard disease registry pipeline for you uh, within the matter of a couple of days. Um, uh, it's basically as uh, easy as opening a ticket and the registry is uh, created. So what, what, what information does that registry have? I'll kind of just uh, briefly tell you guys. But uh, we are able to kind of uh, integrate data from multiple sources. So IHIS, REDCap, uh, custom data sources. We are able to kind of pull them, put them in a database, uh, and have it available for the researchers. Uh, currently, uh, uh, we are, we are uh, kind of offering it for uh, $10,000 as a base price. Obviously, uh, that can change depending on the cohort size and any additional work. Uh, typically, there are some additional data elements that the user needs. Uh, so that basically is then we work with the individual customers to kind of do that. But the baseline price is $10,000, and you get access to all of your uh, data 24-7. The re registry is refreshed every week. Uh, so, so all of that becomes part of it. We already have uh, about six uh, different registries, uh, and we are looking for more. Um, overall, that's the architecture. Uh, like I said, you are able to capture data from uh, uh, the, the uh, from IHIS. Basically, we get data from IW or the Clarity, uh, Redcap, or any other custom data source. We have a standard pipeline. So, if you have forms, and uh, Amy can kind of help you create those forms as well. So, a lot of our, our researchers. Uh, capture like uh, patient reported outcomes and things like that in REDCap, uh, which we are able to kind of bring in, uh, marry it up with the data from IHIS. So you see one data source with all of that information. Um, uh, these databases are typically then used by the end users, which are researchers and their research staff, and or uh, by statisticians to uh, finally when they are close to the publication phase. So. Uh, there is obviously a portal, again, which uh, John is going to show you guys uh, how it looks, how you can query. Uh, but uh, there are different ways to access the database. Biostatisticians, for instance, can connect to the database directly. Uh, um, uh, they, they have their own tools, R or SAS or whatever they're using. Uh, uh, they can kind of uh, directly connect to a database and uh, uh, query it. It is secure. It is all behind the medical center network. 
uh, you have to log in using your OSMC credentials and so on and so forth. So all of that goodness is part of it. As far as data elements are concerned, uh, we bring in standard data elements corresponding to like procedures, observations like labs, uh, problem lists, uh, uh, demographics, uh, drugs, um, uh, clinical encounters, and so on and so forth. And John will kind of go into details about that, but that's basically a standard pool that you get. It, it should satisfy 80% of your needs. Um, uh, and then uh, the rest really depends on the specific disease type or specific domain that you're uh, interested in. So anyway, so that's where I'm going to stop talking about Scarlet, so uh, not to steal John's thunder. Uh, and I'll move on to the next application. Um, this is called My Experience. Uh, this was developed in collaboration with um, uh, Tim Huerta, um, uh, uh, who is, who has, his, I think, a joint faculty between BMI and Family Medicine. Uh, the idea of the application is basically uh, empowering patients, families, uh, and even a hospital staff, uh, people like you and me, uh, to give instant feedback uh, for uh, their experience at the hospital uh, and when it comes to patients and their families about their healthcare experience. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the idea is uh, that the users uh, of the application can kind of call attention to any issues that they see, uh, for instance, a long parking line. Uh, uh, for, for valet, or uh, they see something broken that needs to be taken care of right away, a spill in the hallway. Uh, right now, uh, if you are in the hospital, you have no idea how to report it. Uh, so the idea is to kind of have this application uh, on your phone, and you can kind of, kind of just be able to report these uh, uh, items. Uh, of course, from the hospital side, we want to be able to recognize people who respond to this um, and take care of things quickly and uh, uh, improve the patient experience uh, uh, as well. So from a quality side, that is uh, very important. Um, the way we are developing the platform right now is it is accessible through the web. Uh, you can uh, uh, download it um, using a URL. Uh, well, you can actually access it using a URL and kind of use it as a home screen. There's ways to do that. Uh, we are uh, targeting a, a, a soft beta launch uh, early next month uh, with a group of 50-ish uh, users uh, uh, and kind of test it out. It is already hooked up to a, a service platform behind the scenes. Uh, also, uh, the, the service platform would then uh, uh, allow uh, a low-cost interface to hospitals to track and how to track how they're responding to uh, these concerns. Uh, as you can imagine, this can obviously be extended to many different scenarios. Uh, but as it stands right now, we're kind of focusing on the hospital, specifically Doan and Rhodes uh, to begin with. Uh, so that's a couple of screenshots for the application. Uh, for those who are, oh, I probably didn't forget to mention, but for those who are interested, uh, uh, behind the scenes, the service tool is uh, Jira. Uh, but really, uh, it can be anything. Uh, the interaction between the service tool and the application is defined by standard interfaces, so it can be anything. Uh, right now, it's Jira, uh, and the front end was developed using jQuery Mobile, for those who are interested. Uh, so those are some of the screenshots. Um, uh, the first one is obviously the login screen at the top right. You can see that it says login, so you can log in. Uh, uh, you can do two things, either compliment or concern. So someone did an awesome job and you want to compliment it, or you saw something in the hallway that you felt like this is really cool, I need to compliment this, um, and encourage this behavior. So that's the first button, so you can actually send out a compliment. Um, uh, uh, and then the second part is uh, concern. So you see some spill or some tube light is broken, uh, some problem in the restroom, whatever. Uh, you can kind of click the picture, as you can see on the second uh, screen there. Uh, type in uh, minimal information just to kind of point out where the problem is. Uh, there's another field that we've added after this, but uh, a kind of nearest room field, which you don't see here, but that's now there in the uh, production app, uh, which kind of helps with locating where that problem is. Uh, uh, and then submit it. You can obviously uh, keep track of your reports as well. Uh, so it's a, uh, the idea is simple, but very powerful. Uh, and uh, th that's what uh, my experience at Ohio State is all about. Uh, so that was the first application. I'm going to kind of move on to the second one. Uh, of course, like I said before, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. We can talk. Uh, the second one I'm going to talk about is called uh, Health Tracker. Uh, 
uh, here the goal is for patients to monitor their vitals uh, at home uh, and uh, uh, foster change in uh, their behavior as far as uh, habits for uh, drinking water is concerned or kind of uh, 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 keeping, uh, keeping tabs on uh, their sodium levels are concerned and so on. Uh, obviously, the eventual goal is to reduce clinical visits and uh, save on time and cost uh, corresponding to that. So, uh, the app basically uh, provides scheduled uh, uh, activities uh, like uh, have you had uh, have you uh, had enough water uh, that day or whatever that might be or in that week. Uh, so, we do uh, provide ability to capture uh, weight and fluid intake. Uh, also, this should align with the treatment regimen. So, uh, 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 this app was, by the way, developed in collaboration with uh, a nurse from uh, uh, the Ross. So, this kind of focuses on the, uh, the heart side of the house, but uh, 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 it can obviously be extended to others. Uh, we do provide standard interfaces uh, to capture data from uh, Bluetooth uh, blood pressure monitoring devices uh, and Fitbit. So all of that data is automatically pulled in, uh, uh, and other data that is captured is uh, weight, uh, fluid intake, uh, sodium intake, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and all of that data is obviously then triggers a bunch of uh, alerts, or uh, uh, if if uh, if the weight increases by more than let's say two or five pounds within uh, a day or within the week, then for some specific type of patients, that's co quite. Uh, important to monitor, so it would kind of uh, send out an alert to the patient saying that you got to talk to your doctor now, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, so, so all of this was implemented using um, a standard. So this is right now only on iOS. Uh, uh, it was developed using standard research kit, care kit, health kit, uh, Fitbit API, and Omron is the device for blood pressure monitoring uh, using their API. So we can actually keep adding more devices without the uh, patient needing to download a new uh, app, uh, all of the integration is behind the scenes. Um, so uh, that said, um, let me show you. Yes. Right. So there's. That's an awesome question because uh, that's phase two for the app. So phase one, we are targeting 50 patients, um, uh, but this is all patient-centered. Uh, phase two is uh, we are working with the IHIS uh, strategic committee uh, to kind of integrate this data within IHIS itself. Uh, so research kit actually up, uh, allows connections to uh, and integration with uh, uh, IHIS, uh, but that functionality is not there at Ohio State now. Uh, we are going towards it. So that has to be a part of the strategic roadmap uh, for which you're working. So in that case, all of that data should be within IHIS as part of the patient record. Uh, but as an institution, we are going towards it. And we will align our phase with it, basically. But excellent question. Um, so that those are uh, the screens. Uh, all of it was developed in-house, including the icons. So we did actually end-to-end. Uh, uh, on the left, obviously, you see uh, a weight capture. Right now, it's manual. Um, uh, we could do Bluetooth capture as well uh, as we bring in more devices. Uh, and on the right, you see uh, fluid capture, uh, so the amount of fluids uh, you're taking in. Um, insights, so uh, kind of piggybacking on the question earlier, uh, on the left-hand side, you see the insights. But this is patient-centered right now. Uh, so we do keep track uh, of all uh, the historic trends, and you can kind of see all of that on the uh, on your app itself. But it is patient focused right now. Uh, once all of this is integrated, um, uh, assuming that uh, we are able to align with the uh, IHIS uh, strategy uh, uh, strategic plan, um, this should show up uh, in IHIS. But right now, it would be uh, patient centered. They all could also get alerts. There are different level of alerts uh, that kind of uh, 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 tell them to even contact their provider uh, in case certain conditions are met, uh, uh, or uh, they could just kind of prompt them to kind of drink more water, you need to drink more water, or it could actually be the other way as well, drink less water depending on the condition. Uh, so all of those insights are there. You can, on the right-hand side, uh, you see days of the week and how you're tracking, um, all of that. So 
uh, the app is scheduled uh, uh, to be to go into again beta uh, end of next month. Uh, there's this uh, one more item that we are currently working on, which is the sodium intake, uh, which is in dev right now, uh, uh, which would be part of this app as well. Um, there is Fitbit integration, so the uh, possibilities are endless uh, from a Fitbit standpoint. Fitbit allows you to capture a lot of food information. All of that can be integrated. Uh, even if you have other devices like, uh, uh, I guess I'm blanking on devices, but uh, other Fitbit competitors, uh, all of that can be also integrated behind the scenes without uh, the need to actually uh, update the app, per se. So it, is, uh, it interfaces with an API, standard API behind the scenes. So that's uh, health tracker. Uh, I am going to move on to ready. Uh, Stuart here, how am I doing on time? I think I'm okay. So I'm going to assume I'm okay on time. <laughs> uh, so the next one I'm going to talk about is ready. So this is a rheumatology app, uh, slightly different than the health tracker one. Uh, ready focuses on uh, rheumatology. Uh, ready stands for rheumatoid arthritis disease activity. This was actually developed in collaboration with uh, UAB, uh, and this is slated to be launched uh, uh, at UAB uh, and uh, a couple of uh, smaller clinics uh, in the Birmingham area, not here uh, at Ohio State. We are still working through uh, 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 the Ohio State processes to kind of get it out the door. Again, we are also working with the TCO uh, to license it out uh, to a uh, uh, company uh, uh, as part of uh, an extended grant cycle. So uh, Ready is uh, ready for uh, the big show now. Uh, ready allows basically uh, interaction between uh, uh, patients and the physician in a rheumatoid cl uh, arthritis clinic. Uh, it is an iPad application and it, it works on uh, the cloud. Basically it uses Amazon Web Services. Uh, to host itself and kind of collect data. Uh, and one of the reasons why Ohio State cannot adopt it at this point is uh, we, we are still working through the BAA uh, for Amazon. Uh, with that stands for Business Associate Agreement, which is in the works. So as, long, as soon as it kind of gets done, we should be able to kind of uh, uh, kick this off at Ohio State as well. Uh, um, it, it allows you to automatically calculate disease activity scores. All of this is kind of fairly important in context of how it is being done right now. A lot of it is actually being done using paper forms. So uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the disease measurements like pain, pain points and like how, how many swollen joints you have, all of that is captured via paper. Uh, there are, uh, and, and then all of the scores are calculated by hand. Uh, you can imagine the amount of work and the amount of, uh, so amount of energy and amount of errors that are introduced as part of that process. Uh, all of this would be then um, in this app uh, would be transferred to the app itself. Um, let me actually go to the next screen. And uh, so we provide standard uh, pro promise instruments, basically patient reported outcomes. These are fairly standard and are used by most clinics. Uh, it calculates the standard disease activity scores, rapid three CDI. There's many of those. Again, all of this can be standardized. Uh, like I said, uh, for health tracker, uh, with ready as well, you can keep adding these uh, questionnaires uh, on the server side. You don't need to change the app. It will kind of start showing up on the app itself. In fact, some of these questionnaires are also adaptive. So depending on the uh, user response, uh, the next question presented changes. Uh, so, and again, this, is, uh, this can all, all be done on the server side. No need to be make a big change on the app. Everything is uh, highly, it is scalable and secure uh, uh, from a HIPAA standpoint. Uh, we have uh, had an increased emphasis on visualizations and the way the instruments are configured. Uh, uh, for those who are interested, again, research kit, care kit, health kit was used in building this. Uh, this is an example of a screen which is uh, presented to the patient when we are capturing data from the patient. So this is the patient reported outcome. Uh, this is for rheumatoid arthritis. So the buttons are really large to make it easier for them to kind of actually click. Uh, many of them do have trouble. Uh, using their fingers, uh, so this was de deliberately designed to have like large buttons. Um, it is even more painful for them to actually do it on a paper, so this is actually a better way for them to do it. Uh, this is actually a screen for the physician, so once uh, the, the patient actually goes through all of their screens, uh, answering questions about uh, their disease activity, uh, uh, at these, the, the, the dials you see are the different scores that are automatically calculated, and this can be done in real time. So as soon as the patient is done, 
the physician has access to this. Uh, so during the visit, the physician can actually review all of this. Uh, for things that you actually, for, for dials that you see the squiggly line, uh, uh, that is basically dials that have trend information as part of it. So uh, you click on it and then it takes you to the trend chart where you can see the disease activity or that specific score, uh, how that is. So this is all basically for the physician to look at. At the bottom, again, this is not integrated with IHIS right now, at least at Ohio State, but at the bottom you see uh, uh, drug prescriptions. So uh, that module is in there. If it is integrated with the uh, local EHR, you can actually see uh, the activity scores uh, and how they trend along with their prescriptions as well. So um, uh, that's an example uh, of uh, the trend for the physicians to kind of look at. So I'm going to move on to the next application. Um, if anyone has any questions. OK. So the next application is uh, Onster U. Uh, and uh, John Thompson at the back of the room again, uh, he is actually one of the prime architects for uh, this application. Uh, this is a really cool one. Uh, this is a fun application. So this was actually developed uh, in collaboration with hackathon students. So there was a hackathon that was organized recently. Uh, people took part of it. And the winners of the hackathon actually were given the opportunity to collaborate with professional uh, uh, developers. Uh, to uh, partner and build an application, a mobile application. Uh, uh, so this is basically student-driven, student, uh, student designed, student developed with help from uh, professionals um, uh, uh, at the university. So the, what, what it does is basically, uh, uh, Onster is basically a monster without the M. Uh, so uh, imagine Michigan rivalry, uh, no M's on campus. Uh, so similarly, the idea is that unhealthy monsters are being kind of converted to healthy onsters by removing M's. Uh, so that's basically the idea uh, uh, to encourage healthy behavior among students. Uh, there is a, a <clears throat> uh, different uh, kind of uh, cards that you can kind of collect and play and kind of challenge others, other students to uh, engage with you. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, there's different kinds of games in there for like my, mindful breathing. Uh, you can kind of then uh, 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 <clears throat> blow into the microphone and it kind of helps you uh, mindfully breathe. Um, uh, you can, like I said, uh, uh, challenge other uh, monsters uh, around campus uh, and deal with them in these healthy exercises and uh, uh, help them convert into monsters or you yourself get converted into a monster and so on and so forth. So uh, it is quite a fun one. And um, uh, if you have more questions about the app itself, I am sure John can, uh, will be more than happy. But I would like him to focus on Scarlet more <laughs> uh, later. Uh, so those are like the different cards that you can play and challenge and so on. But this is, again, um, a, a, a student driven uh, as part of our um, uh, a commitment to engage with the students, uh, student community as well. OK, so uh, I'm almost towards the end of my presentation. Uh, there's two more uh, applications that I'd like to mention and then move on to the project management practices uh, uh, that we adopt uh, and then end the slide deck. Uh, the first one up there, uh, again, this is to kind of uh, uh, put a bug in your head. So if you see something, you can kind of get in touch with me and we can discuss more. But uh, the first one up there is the cardiovascular risk score calculator. Uh, it is basically a standard score calculator. So the algorithms are fairly standard. Uh, but uh, that is not available in IHIS per se. So the idea is to kind of build that out, uh, consume a specific patient's data, and then generate those risk scores that are available for the physician to look at within IHIS. So it shows up as a link. You can click the link. It kind of pops up within IHIS. Uh, and you can kind of look at those different scores. This is uh, from a physician perspective. Uh, uh, the idea there is, obviously, this one that I've shown here is for cardiovascular risk score. Uh, but it can be any other score. So we have kind of other uh, scores that we've uh, kind of calculated as well. Uh, there, are, there are visualizations in there. Uh, so all of that is adaptable. Uh, but think of, it, think of it the following way. Uh, 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 you open a patient chart on uh, IHIS. Uh, we are able to consume that information on the fly and generate uh, the scores, which are then rendered within IHIS uh, for the physician to look at uh, right then and there. Um, so that's a cardiovascular risk score calculator. Uh, at the bottom is CLO. This was actually developed in collaboration with Academy Health. 
this was specifically developed to foster research reproducibility. Uh, so the idea is that uh, you build bundles of uh, data, uh, algorithms, code, uh, even message forums for that matter, uh, version them uh, in a simple web interface. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, it actually has Git behind the scenes, but you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you can kind of just keep updating the bundles, the application keeps track of uh, the different versions behind the scenes. And the best part is share these bundles uh, to different users. Uh, so uh, the, the user or the consumer side of CLO would be able to download these bundles um, and be able to execute them and reproduce the research results that you have hopefully published. Uh, so kind of making that process easier uh, and hopefully reducing the cost and effort of uh, reproducing uh, research that has already been done. So hopefully reduce uh, reinventing the wheel. Uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are a bunch of bundles up there uh, around maternity health uh, from uh, think tanks in DC and so on, but um, you more than welcome to kind of go to CLO register. It's open for everyone. Uh, of course, when you, sh when you as a producer uh, share, create and share these bundles, you have the ability to kind of make it open to the public or just create a small group that you want to share with. You can attach different licensing agreements with the bundle, uh, so you can kind of control how you want to disseminate your research as well. Uh, so that's um, uh, CLO. That said, like I promised, uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about project management uh, and how we do it within the team. Uh, uh, so typically, uh, uh, project management is done in a waterfall way uh, within most traditional IT organizations. My team operates slightly differently. Uh, we, we are an agile shop, but that means basically from a consumer standpoint is uh, we work with you very closely. So uh, you would be, or someone from your team as a customer would be part of the development team being part of our uh, weekly meetings. Uh, uh, continuously helping us to kind of groom our backlogs of ac uh, and prioritizing things that you want to be done. Uh, so you have high visibility within the project. Uh, the project teams are dedicated teams, they're smaller teams. Uh, we have uh, short uh, targets for projects, so we would actually kind of create a target eight weeks out saying that we got to achieve this within eight weeks uh, and kind of try and get it delivered. We are obviously flexible. Uh, so even though we start out with a project charter, uh, uh, kind of which says these are the high level goals for the project, uh, we can certainly be uh, accommodative of any changes. So halfway down the line, you feel like, okay, seems like this I thought was very important, but maybe this needs to be more important. Uh, again, I'm not gonna focus on the uh, time cost uh, and uh, personal triangle, but uh, obviously that has implications uh, and the customers kind of are win within the team to understand that. So if they prioritize a requirement higher, what, how much is gonna cost them extra or is it gonna be less or so on and so forth. But it is one coherent team trying to achieve a goal within a short period of time. Uh, to give you an example, the health tracker project that I talked about earlier, which does Fitbit integration, the Bluetooth monitoring in, uh, integration, all of that has been developed within eight weeks to date. So uh, we, are, we are really, really quick to kind of uh, finish up projects and deliver it to the customers. Uh, but obviously that does mean uh, that the customer has to be part of the team and be willing to work with us, help us prioritize and uh, go with it. So uh, that's what uh, the project management overall structure is. This is how it looks like. So ideation, design, uh, implementation and testing, sometimes things do go wrong, but uh, it is short cycles. So uh, uh, the project, uh, the customer is with meeting with us every week. So even if we mess up something or there's miscommunication and we develop something that they don't like, it's just one week worth of work. Uh, and then we kind of uh, uh, redo the development and then kind of finish up with the final product. So we rarely miss our targets at the end of the day. So that's the project management process. I think that's my last slide. I'm gonna pause and see if you have any questions.